We appreciate you stopping by, and we're wrapping up the 2023 Indoor Football League season with the Dollar Loan Center MVP, the IFL Most Valuable Player from that championship game, the quarterback of the Bay Area Panthers, Dalton Sneed. Welcome, young man. Thank you, Dave. Always, uh, always great to talk some ball and talk life with you, so I appreciate you having me on. I like talking life more than talking ball with you. It's a <laughs> great experience. Hey, what did it mean for you, Dalton, to be on that field? That's where you began your IFL career. Couple games for Vegas. I was looking at the stats from from that twenty two season. Three out of eight, uh, twenty eight yards over a couple games. Then you go to Sioux Falls, twenty five touchdowns, three picks there. So you have that Vegas Sioux Falls merger. Those kind of mm-hmm. come together, and you play in Vegas against Sioux Falls to win the championship. What does that mean? It's kind of a storybook type ending. Yeah, right. It's it's almost comical at times. Uh, you know, the way God can manipulate your life and, and the way that things can unfold. Right. So it, it was, I think it hit me the most, you know, cause I'd always been thinking about, Oh, this would be crazy. You know, if Sioux Falls wins here and Sioux Falls wins here and, and just the way it all played out and came together was wild. But I think it, where it hit me the most was our intro running onto the field, the, the corner of the end zone, that tunnel that we came out of um, it was like deja vu because I remember vividly running out of that tunnel, being introduced, uh, my first start in Vegas, our very first game, first game of the Vegas franchise, I was the starting quarterback for that game. And um, when I came out of that tunnel, it was Dalton Sneed for for the Vegas Nighthawks. And and now I was just I was standing in that tunnel, and they're about to call us out. And I'm like, wow, like it's amazing how life works, how it comes full circle, because that was, I was part of that team. And, and it felt like just in a blink of an eye, I, I was – back there in that tunnel standing in the same uh the same spot just thinking wow you know life life is that's all that's the only words i could have for it was just wow I, i'm about to you know run out of this tunnel to play for a national championship when i remember the same feelings i had running out for my first true professional start and just the way it came full circle and and how it ended it was pretty much exactly like you said a, a storybook ending that's an amazing story and a great turnaround for you. Hey, how are you such a better player now than you were at Vegas? Obviously, they didn't think you were the guy. You go to mm-hmm. Sioux Falls, and the guy I was with doing the radio, we saw you shred the Bay Area Panthers last year. I said, hey, I like that Dalton Sneed. And that coach asked me in the offseason, I said, hey, Dalton Sneed, if he was on a good team, is an MVP caliber quarterback if he's given the chance. And sure enough, he proved that. Hey, so how are you a better guy now than you were last year? Man, it, I think all across the board, you know, the, the more reps you have in the league and and kind of going back to the Vegas situation, I only got two drives in that first game. And then they then they benched me, brought the other guy in. Uh, and then the second game, I didn't even suit out. Um, so it was kind of like he wrote me off right after those first two drives. And um, for whatever reason, you know, it's all God's plan. And, and that's kind of in, in the rear view. But to answer your question, um, I think just – the system and and reps understanding how the game is is so much different than the outdoor game. I mean, you talk about the dimensions, the field size, um, you talk about the players, uh, eight on eight, you have high motion. So I could get into all the schematics, but just taking all the differences and and seeing how you can take advantage of them, understanding, okay, the defense can only do this much against this formation. Okay, well, if this is their their strong safety, if I find him and, and how he's aligned every play, then that's going to tell me the coverage. So it was it was more so of the mental game, understanding the game, understanding, you know, what the defense is trying to do to you to stop you um, and how you gain success. Right. So for me, it was it was more film um, and everything pre-snap because, you know, I, I had the confidence that I was a playmaker and a quarterback to, that could get the job done. Right. Um, I was confident in my play, my playing ability, but understanding the game and where you should be going with the ball before the ball snapped is the biggest thing. And that translates to any level. I mean, you talk about, you, you could talk to an NFL quarterback and be like, okay, Hey, wh- how much is going on pre-snap? Well, everything. You know, you should have an idea of exactly where you're going with the ball when it's snapped. And that's the that's the mental IQ that it takes to be a quarterback at any professional rank is how's the defense trying to stop me and how do I combat that? And then it just after that, it falls into your training. OK, take your drop, make your make your right read uh, and, and deliver the ball. Do what a, a basic quarterback should do. Deliver the ball on time in a good spot. So it, it was the mental side of the game that was biggest for me. May 13th was the last time you threw an interception. That was the first quarter of the game at Northern Arizona. You didn't throw one for the rest of the year, over 100 passes. 
was there some kind of shift and maybe everything kind of clicking in where you see everything better after a few games? You know, I don't think there was a much of a shift. I mean, I can name all three of my interceptions for you right now and kind of what went wrong on that play, um, how it happened. But I think a big part of my success and why you see, you know, the touchdown interception ratio is one, the offensive line two the receivers and playmakers around me and the play calling where, where, where coach Wooten comes in. And when you put all three of those together and you have a running game, like we do in the IFL, that makes your job as a quarterback that much easier, especially with Justin Rankin in the backfield. And then you got JT who can run the ball. You got Cottrell. We had weapons everywhere. That's, that was the beauty of our offense. Um, so if they wanted to try and stop one thing, we would just combat it. And, and you saw that with Justin Rankin. And, and kind of my whole point to that is when you have a running game and they have to commit to stopping the run, you see what we do in the pass game. And it complements each other beautifully because then if, okay, you got Nye Jackson, we have to get back. He, he's he's going to take the top off our defense. Sure. You want to drop out of there? I'll hand it to Justin Rankin. Let him do what he does. And that's what made our, our offense so potent and, and so dangerous was the weapons that we could attack you from kind of wherever we wanted. And, and when you can set the tone as an offense and don't have to play to the defense, if that makes sense, then it, it the window is open anywhere. You know, you, you have options all over the field. And that was that's what made my life easier as, as a quarterback and what I'm sure made Coach Wooten's life easier as a play caller, knowing, hey, we're we're just about as balanced as you could be. We can go over the top. We can pick you apart. We can hand it off all game. And you saw that in the playoffs. You saw how beautifully we ran the ball in the playoffs. And when you can have ball control like that and take the ball away from the other team, if they don't have the ball, they can't score. If you don't turn the ball over, they can't score. So chew the clock up hand the ball off if you need to and throw it when you need to. There was one stretch starting in the Tucson game where the Panthers had the ball 16 consecutive times with touchdowns before that streak ended in that championship game. That certainly says a lot. And I want to make sure I do this too. I want to make sure I give the offensive line some love on Instagram. So I'm going to cut out a piece of what you say about them. And I'll make sure I'll put it on Facebook, Twitter, Instagram about the line, along with a highlight of a ranking touchdown. Make sure I give them a shout out. So ready? Go. First of all, our success starts up front. Uh, you got you got three road graders, four road graders, depending on the package. But our success, our success all season stemmed behind that offensive line. Playmakers can't make plays without the big guys up front. And they did a phenomenal job this year. You saw how dominant we were running the football, how many times Rankin would, would break into the second level, the linebackers and and whatnot, because the front four were taken care of. So without that unit, I like to picture it as a car. I'm the driver because I'm the quarterback, right? The engine does not go anywhere, or the car does not go anywhere without the engine. And that's what our offense line was. They were the engine that ran the car. And they didn't get a lot of love, but, man, every time I can talk about them, that's that's the staple of our offense. Perfect. <laughs> that's going to work. Hey, I wanted to ask you, and I didn't know about it you know, during the week of that championship game, but here's Dixie talking about you after the game, after that win over Sioux Falls. Mm -hmm. Just hard work and understand that we was not losing this game. Like when nobody knew that Dalton was like 30% today. His shoulders almost hanging off the bone, but he came out, he, he worked all week, and now he took us to the championship. So if Dalton, I, I love him. I love him. I love him. What happened? Whew. It was uh, one plane specific. We were playing against Northern Arizona in that Western Conference. Um, I had a run to the left side near the goal line, ended up getting stood up at about the three-yard line. They're blowing the whistle. I'm kind of not giving up, but not trying to fight for more yards. And uh, one of the Northern Arizona players decided to suplex me. It was a personal foul after the play and everything. But when I came down, um, I landed right on my shoulder and my elbow. Um, popped the bursa sack in my elbow, had uh, an AC joint messed up and, a, and a, um, a muscle impingement or shoulder impingement, whatever they, they classified it as, all in my shoulder. So it was kind of a plethora of problems all through my arm. Um, and two days, so we played Saturday, two, ga two, two days after that, I couldn't even lift my arm out to like a T pose, hor completely horizontal. So I couldn't lift it at all. Um, and I was honestly a little worried. Um, but to God be the glory, man, he had his healing hand on me and, and, uh, special shout out to, uh, to, to coach Andrew and Javi, our, our athletic trainer, who 
were constantly working with me the whole week, just trying to rehab to get my shoulder to a place where I could throw. Um, and I, so I didn't practice the whole week. I, I took mental reps. I stood behind, <clears throat> went through my footwork and, and my read. So I got the mental picture of it, but did not physically throw football until the day before a game or the day before the national championship in like a hotel room when we were standing about 10, 15 yards just to try and get it loose, see how I was feeling. Um, And I was still feeling it, but I was like, okay, this is, it's to a point where I'm going to be good enough to play. So I hadn't thrown a ball over 10 yards until we got into warmups and we're on the field throwing. I was like, here we go. Had it taped up with with KT tape, um, took some ibuprofen. I I always try and stay away from painkillers. So it took some ibuprofen to to get a little bit of that inflammation away, sprayed it down with some biofreeze to numb it a little bit, um, and just went out there and let adrenaline take over. So it was, it was, uh, I'm going to be honest, I was, I was a little nervous, you know, heading in Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, when I still couldn't even pick my arm up. But God works in mysterious ways, and I'm very grateful for that. Did it hurt during the game? I don't think it hurt in between plays. Um, I think my adrenaline and everything I was thinking about, it was just kind of, hey, I, it, like it's my body's going to react and make the play. If it was hurt to an extent where it physically couldn't do it, then my body would, would tell me that or it would just shut down. But it didn't hurt whenever I felt myself throwing. Anytime I would get tackled or land, um, I would try and be very, very weary to protect it, so never landing on my right side. There was one play, though. It was actually a busted play, and I ended up trying to just get whatever positive yards I could, and I landed on it. And my elbow was so sensitive to the touch. My shoulder was sensitive. So I, I got up, and I was like, ooh, I felt that one, and it was – just trying to keep it loose, you know, that it, when you're in, when you're in the heat of the game, that adrenaline really takes over and you can kind of, you're going to feel it in between plays. But as soon as, as soon as you start your cadence and the ball snapped, it's like everything just dissipates. You know, for a, a lot of folks that followed indoor football, they think, oh, this one win team goes on to win a championship. Uh, Cinderella, you know, they came out of nowhere, but <laughs> you guys, when you guys were formed, you know, ranking, maybe the first guy that maybe, uh, made it cool to go to the Bay area. And a lot of the guys came after him um, winning a championship was something that from day one, you guys looked at, it wasn't something that was this you know magical carpet ride to get there. Absolutely. And I think that tone was set uh, day one, you know, guys weren't coming here to mess around. It wasn't, Hey, we got to go play football again. No, it's, Hey, we have an opportunity and anything less than a championship run you shouldn't be here. If you don't have the mindset that I'm working for the next 21 weeks to win a championship on August 5th, I don't want you to be here. So that was the the culture that really got everyone bought in. And and that's something else that I think a lot of people overlook is, is the culture of a team and how that team rallies when, when you get down or when adversity hits and the culture on our team this year was, was unbelievable. It was, it was almost unlike anything I've ever been a part of in terms of camaraderie, in terms of, okay, we start stretches, everyone's, you know, messing around, not messing around, but being able to talk, joke, have a good time, laugh with each other. But as soon as we do our wind jacks and come up, now that it's work time. And it's it's rare to have a team where everybody's bought in. Everyone's going to give you 100% effort on that day. Everyone's going to give you the film study when they're outside of football. It's not just video games and, and sitting on your butt. So that culture and that I keep coming back to it. Camaraderie of our team w- was so unique, and is is what led us and built our team into that that championship caliber team. Love talking about play with you, but also uh, appreciation and your attitude of gratitude. And it didn't really uh, manifest itself any more than what I heard from you after the win over Northern Arizona. Hard to not be emotional right now, man. It's it's been a long, long road. Uh, I'm so thankful for this team. So thankful for my teammates, and just thankful to be here. Don, what's it mean for you to have a family like this? I've talked about it. In fact, I met them on the road, that Mike and Bethany, and having that group in your corner to get you to this point in your life. Yeah, and my, uh, my parents, <laughs> I think I could count on one hand how many games my parents have missed in my entire football career. And I've been playing football for 18 years. I'm so blessed and I'm so privileged to have the parents that I do. Uh, they're the most supportive, caring, and and just nurturing parents I could ever ask for. And I'm, I'm beyond, beyond grateful for them, beyond grateful for my wife, the support she gives me throughout the week, uh, getting my mind off football when it needs to be and letting me lock in when I can. Um, 
taking care of my body, massaging my arm when I need it, man. She She's a part of my team in my corner as well. So, man, I got, I got a great wife. I got a great support system. And, Dave, you're not even seeing all of it. You should see the 60 to 80 other family members around the country, man. I, I, I love you guys. Grandpa, I know you're watching this. I love you. Grandpa Jackie, Grandma Sandra, everybody, Mimi, Tori, Austin. Man, I, I love all you guys. Baby Brax, love you, brother. <laughs> I knew you were going to give them a shout-out, and I knew it would be that emotional for you. So I appreciate your time, Dalton. You're good people. And I'm sure they're very proud of you. Yeah, man. I appreciate it, Dave. You guys have a good one. I'm supposed to be this hardened interviewer. Don't make me tear up as I'm talking to you. That That's pretty cool. Did you get everybody in there? Oh, no. Oh, no. No, no, I didn't. I've, I have the thing about my family. I have so many extended relatives and so many people from high school, college, friends of the family, friends of my parents, you know, people that my dad works with in the, the whole Phoenix fire department and how many people even just came to the Rattlers game, even being Phoenix. I mean, I, it was, it was a, a joke like, Oh, Snead, how many tickets you need? 10. I'm like, dude, I need like 150. <laughs> and obviously it wasn't feasible, but that was, that's the kind of support and the, the, the people around me in my life that just have, have always, you know, pushed me and, and been there when I fall and, and just, I use the word nurturing because my, my journey has been tough. It has not been easy. It's not been, it, it's not just a point where like when I got, when I got cut from Vegas and traded two falls, I remember as soon as I flew into Sioux Falls, I was sitting in this hotel room. I was in a hotel by myself looking out the window. And it was it, – it, the only way I can put it is it was a dark time. You know, you, you start to feel sorry for yourself and you start to, you know, why me? You play a victim mentality. And I had to take a step back and realize how, how grateful I was to have a sense of gratitude of just the people in my life, the, how far I had gotten to that point, you know, and, and – the support system and how fortunate and blessed I am to have the parents that would, would do anything for me to allow me to chase my dream would, would give up, you know, days of working would, would juggle five, six, seven things just to be able to make the game. You know, it was, I, I, I can't put words Dave behind it and, and how just blessed I am, you know, and, and, where I would be nowhere close. I probably wouldn't even be playing football if I, if I did not have the support and the rocks behind me that I do. So I'm eternally grateful. I can only hope that I can affect people's lives around me and, and God willing my kids someday and nephews and whatever it may be, any, any facet of life. I, I, I pray and I hope that I can have the same effect and, and portray the same type of um, belief and people that, that my family and support system is, has put in me. That's an amazing tribute. And I saw them around the pool table too. So it was 114 degrees or something like that. And they make that trip to come out and watch you play. You know, that's gotta be pretty cool. And I know they'll be around you with the, the next phase of your life, whatever that takes you in terms of football. What mm -hmm. is the criticism if there is one? And you said it's been a hard journey. Man, man you're damn good. <laughs> Stop getting hung up on, how tall he is and, and what your 40 time is, watch the film. So what yeah. is the criticism or if there is one on, of Dalton Sneed going to a higher level? Cause I'm rooting for you. I wish I had the answer for that, Dave. I wish watch I knew the it. film guys. Right. Yeah. I've always been the eye in the sky doesn't lie, you know? So, and it's always, it's always kind of been that way for me, especially coming out of high school. Yeah. I was not, I, our, our team, our offense in high school, my junior year, we were number one in the country, in the country after a regular season for total yards in a game and points in a game. We were number one in both categories. Um, had 40-something touchdowns, to like eight interceptions, so my ratio was great. I was running the ball. We, we went to the playoffs, so it wasn't like we had a, a horrible season. And uh, I had nothing, had no college interest, had literally nothing. And I didn't get an offer. My only, only offer coming out of college was UNLV. And I didn't get it until July of my senior year and then ended up committing two weeks later. And then the staff got fired at the end of that season. So my scholarship kind of fell through. So that's a whole nother story, but it's just been littered with adversity. Um, and I've always been, I don't want to say overlooked because I feel like every athlete says that if you're not where you want to be, oh, I'm overlooked. I'm, and I try and be super realistic about it. Okay. Hey, what, 
what do I need to do to put myself in a position to be successful? Just like you were saying, like, if I were to talk to an NFL quarterback coach, I would say, hey, watch my film and, and critique me. Tell, I don't want you to tell me what I'm doing right. I want you to tell me what I'm doing wrong. I, I want to know what do I, what do you need to see from me to give me an opportunity? And that's kind of how I've molded my, my thought process behind the last two years is, okay, I got to have great footwork. I got to get the ball out quick. I got to be a great decision maker. So that, that means no turnovers. Um, so that's what I've tried to do. And I don't know, I'm not going to say, I don't know what else I could do. Cause there's always going to be room for improvement. I could go back and watch a game with you right now and tell you, okay, I did this wrong. I did this wrong. I need to be quicker here, but I don't know one answer for you that would answer that question. I wish I, I wish I knew the answer to that because I would, I would, I'd fix it in a heartbeat if I could. Yeah, no doubt about it. I mean, this guy can simply play 49 touchdowns, three picks over this last year. By far, touchdown interception ratio, number one, number one in the IFL and completion percentage. And you get the ring. Didn't get the all IFL on it. I don't know. Did that bother you at all? Like, hey, I wasn't first or second team. Now that Not we're really. just you and I talking. No, I think that. All, I, the way that I see those is always team accolades. Even even me getting the MVP in the in the the championship game, they're all team accolades, and I'm always going to be a team guy. Like I, I I I could care less at the end of the day. You could rank me last in everything, but as long as our team is winning and we win the championship, I'm going to be the happiest kid alive. Um, I wasn't frustrated, but I was kind of taken back, man. Like man, what did what did what did these other coaches that voted on these other guys? What did they see from them? What do I, what do I need to do more of? Because the, the, the accolades are great. They're, they're a testament to your hard work and, and what you put in. Like I said, they're all team awards, but when you get that recognition, it makes you feel like you're doing something right. And when you don't get that recognition, it makes you feel like you're doing something wrong or that you could be doing more. So that's kind of the way that I took it was, okay, well, where did I go wrong? What more could I have done? And that's kind of, I, I want to say a huge chip on my shoulder, but it was like, hey, you know, what do these guys know? You know, let, let me let me go show them in the playoffs. Let me go show them what, what, what a what a what a quarterback that wins championships look like. And that was kind of my mentality. So it didn't it didn't bother me, but it was like, I'm going to show you. And that's kind of the mentality I've had my entire career. I've always I felt like I've always been the underdog. You know, I ended up going Juco, had one offer coming out of there. Actually, the same coaching staff that recruited me to UNLV the first time. So it's weird how that all ended up full circle. I swear my life is just it goes in circles, but it always comes back and completes. And you go, ah okay, I, I see what you're doing there, you know? So it's a short, long answer for a short question, but I wouldn't say it bothered me, but it definitely motivated me, put a chip on my shoulder. Now, in order to do something, uh, eclipse a record, you sit in the outdoor game, you have to get back outside, do it because you had this unbelievable run at UNLV. I want to play for everybody. And this goes back to October 2nd, 2016. Let me get this thing going. I mean, you... Uh, look like you're dead. I mean, you're finished. And somehow you extricate yourself and you go 91 yards for a touchdown. What do you remember about that play? Whew. Well, first of all, so that was my, that was my first start uh, at UNLV, my redshirt freshman year. Um, and I, I remember it was a third and 11 close game at that point. We had, we had uh, a motion with the tight end switch verticals. Uh, we called it red iron switch streaks and uh, I remember thinking, okay, hey, you're backed up, third and 11. Worst case scenario, it's an incompletion. You throw it away, you get back to line of scrimmage. Can't take a sack, can't take a safety, can't turn the ball over, backed up like this. So it was part of being a – I was a young quarterback. So I was, hey, I got to limit my mistakes. So I remember seeing it was a tighter window, probably could have maybe tried to fit it in there to, to the, the tight end. You'll see him bend behind that linebacker in front of the safety. Um but just thought, oh, hey, I need I need to get back to the line of scrimmage. So stepped up, kind of got pushed back by my own guy. And before I knew it, I was like stumbling and I looked down and our end zones were black. And I was like, oh, no, I like I need to get out of this end like now. So you actually see right here. So I'm like, see, it's black, get hit. And then as soon as I got out of there, <laughs> I saw a cutback. So I cut back across the field and I was like, hey, I have an opportunity to get the first down here. So you see me kind of angling towards the first down stick to get out of bounds. And I saw our tight end come coming across the field. I'm like, oh, I'm just going to I'm going to cut off this. And as soon as I cut off him, it was like poof, on nothing but green grass. I mean, no one in my peripherals. And I was just like, who? And you feel like it's the longest run of your life. And all you're thinking is do not get caught. I don't know what's behind me, but it's like you're running from a, a vicious dog. 
you're just running. And uh, I, I remember scoring and thinking, like, what, what just happened? You know, I, I'm turning around. Everyone's going crazy celebrating with you. I was like, oh, wow. And it didn't even hit me until really later that night. Cool story. I I was with my roommate. We walked into our apartment, and his uh, his family was, was there um, waiting for us to get home. And they had ESPN turned on. As soon as I walk in the door, top 10 starts playing. And then Dalton Sneed, UNLV. And it was just like a childhood dream of mine coming true. You know, you always – you're always in the backyard with your friends. Oh, top 10 plays, like Snead drops back for the game winner. Da, da, da. Yeah, and you, you fantasize about that. But seeing that come to real life, man, it was a it was one of those moments where you're just like, wow, you, you know, you worked your entire life for this. You dream for it. And then yeah, now it's just it's happening right in front of your eyes, man. It's kind of like same feeling I had with the with the national championship. You, you just you, you, it's a moment of awe, a moment of of gratitude and like wow. Like, you know, everything you've worked for, everything you've dreamed about is, is unfolding right in front of you. And it's, you have to take a moment because I've missed this in the past. You, you have to take a moment to, to soak it in because you really have to deliberately think about that because before you know it, it goes by so fast. So taking that moment to just sit and reflect and, you know, wow, pat your, pat yourself on the back and, and think, you know, this is, you did it, bro. That's kind of, that's kind of the mindset. I remember you telling me the story that, after the run, your defense actually was pretty good, maybe too good for your liking because they got you guys back on the field. Three and out. <laughs> Quickest three and out. It was like three incompletions, quick spot of the ball. And they're like, all right, offense, they're putting. Here we go. And I'm still sitting on the bench <gasps> catching my breath. It was it was funny, though, man. It was <laughs> heck of a game. It's like the one time you'd have wanted your defense to let them get a couple of first downs, you know. Yeah, I had a couple of first there. downs and punt. Exactly, exactly. But no, it was it was good how it worked out. I ended up winning that game, so I got my first career win. It was it was a blessing. Hey, Dalton, what's your timetable in terms of figuring out like what's the next thing for you? Obviously, the Panthers would say, "Hey, run it back," but you know, we're we're obviously looking to develop guys. And in a dream world, you're on an NFL team. You know, making money. Right. What's the the next step for you, and how you go about doing it? I think I'm not very focused right now on where I'm going to land. Um, I try and keep what I can handle, so to speak, in in my in my circle. So like right now, my only plan right now is getting film together and, and letting my body recuperate from the season. Um, once I get to a point where, you know, my body's it, I've been under so much stress for what is it? 23 weeks now that physical toll it takes on your body, the amount of weight I've lost, you know, I'm, I'm beat up. So I need to be diligent in taking this time. Hey, you need to you need to rest. You need to recover. So for the next two to three weeks, that's all it's going to be. I mean, it's going to be light runs, get in the swimming pool, get get mobility going, letting my muscles really recoup. Um, once that time comes, you know, I'm going to start lifting and training hard and then just taking it one day at a time. As crazy as that sounds, you know, the the football business is so mentally challenging because it could be tomorrow you get, you get a call. It could be in three months. It could be never, you know, so you, you really have to walk by faith and not by sight. Um, and that's what I've tried to live by every day, because if you don't, you, you start beating yourself up and you, you get anxiety and you think, Hey, what, you know, why, why not me? What do I need to do today? And you start doing more than, than you need to do, you know? So I, I, I focus on what, what I can control. And right now what I can control is getting my body right getting my mind right and, and letting the chips fall where they may. And I've, I found a lot of peace in that, you know, that, Hey, maybe that was the last time I ever put a helmet on playing for the Bay Area Panthers. That might've been my last game ever. Um, and I found comfort and peace in that knowing that, Hey, if an opportunity doesn't come, you have done absolutely everything you can to put yourself in a position to be successful. And at the end of the day, that's all I can ask for. That's how, how I want to live my life. That's how I want to be remembered that, you know, he just, he laid it all out on the line but he didn't let other people and the decisions they make and how his life unfolded, let him become a victim of, of not getting the opportunity or, 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 or feeling like I'm the victim because I didn't get the shot that I felt I deserved. Even though I have so many people around me, Hey, you deserve this. You deserve this. That's great. I, I love that. I appreciate that, but I'm just going to continue to work. Yeah, no matter what happens, Dawn, you've left a great legacy in the Bay Area, and Panther fans have been lucky to watch you play. We really appreciate your time. 
Well, that means a lot, man. I really appreciate that. And it's, it's always a pleasure coming on talking with you. You've been, you've been awesome this year for us. So thank you for you and all you do, man. You, you've been a pleasure to work with and, and have around the organization. So thank you very much. You're the man. Bay Area Panthers quarterback, Dalton Sneed. Smash the like and subscribe buttons helps out in such a big way. The audio version of the Dave Lewis show is on Apple Podcasts, Google Podcasts, iHeartRadio, wherever you get your podcasts. The five-star reviews, the positive comments are huge, helps out in such a big way. Thank you so much for watching, and we'll talk to you next time.